Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our gentle yoga class. So today is day five in our series where we explore the yamas and the niyamas, uh, yoga's ethical practices. And so I have this book that I'll be reading from today um, by Deborah Dell. And we're on the fifth yama which is actually the last one so there's 10 yamas and niyamas and i love to use props in this class so i have um block strap blanket chair and then what i'll do is suggest if you want everything is just a suggestion so if you'd like you can take a blanket and make a very small roll and then place it this is perpendicular on your mat so this is going to go right underneath your heart center of course you can always feel free to tune in settle in in any way that you'd like so i'm going to just come onto my back so that the blanket roll is right underneath my heart center so just kind of shimmy out and roll onto your back if this feels comfortable maybe it feels good to cactus the arms opening through the heart and the chest the shoulders or you could balance your elbows on the blanket roll and maybe rest your hands on your belly and then go ahead and walk your feet as wide as your mat allowing your knees to tent in towards each other we call this constructive rest if for any reason that blanket roll feels uncomfortable, you could simply press your heels into the earth, unroll the blanket so that it's flat behind you. And then just take a moment to arrive. You might imagine yourself settling into the present moment, just like leaves falling from the trees. Take a moment to feel held, cradled, and supported. And then observe the rise and fall of your breath. You might seal the lips together gently allow for space in between the teeth rest your tongue at the roof of your mouth and start to listen for the soothing ocean waves of your breath starting to bring into your practice what we call ujjayi breathing. Ujjayi breathing is known as the warrior breath. And when we practice it, it can help us off the mat. When life starts to get tough, when we might experience stress, we might have trained ourselves to cultivate this warrior breath. And basically, it's a slight constriction at the back of the throat as if you were going to fog up a mirror. And then you might think about it like the times you've been to the ocean, if you have been, and you take a big shell, and you hold it against your ear, and you can hear the sound of the waves. And what this intentional breathing might do for you is allow yourself to soothe your parasympathetic nervous system the nervous system that reacts to stress and so in my yoga teacher training they taught us about the vagus nerve which runs throughout your body, when we practice this deep breathing, 
This helps to strengthen our vagus nerve. Notice where in the body you can let go of any tension or holding. Relaxing further into a strong, supportive earth. Begin to feel the weight of gravity, like a giant hug from the universe, holding you, cradling you. further allowing you to relax and let go. And that brings us to our fifth yama, which is called aparigraha, and it means non-possessiveness. What if we could trust life like we trust the breath? What if we could take in all of the nourishment of the moment and then let it go fully, trusting that more nourishment will come? The guideline of a parigraha non-possessiveness invites us to let go and to pack lightly for our journey through life, all the while caring deeply and enjoying fully. If that guideline of aparigraha speaks to you, non-possessiveness, you could imagine for a moment, maybe it is like a glowing jewel at your heart center. And then from this place, let's go ahead and invite some gentle movements in. So if that blanket roll is feeling good where it is, you can leave it there. If not, you can always discard it, letting yourself let go. Practicing the Mari Graha. Go ahead and stretch your arms out into a letter T shape and then allow the knees to gently float from side to side. Breathing into your back body. And just any time during practice today, it's natural for your curious monkey mind to want to contemplate the past or plan for the future. And so just offer that mind of yours compassion and curiosity. And then just like training ourselves, it's a practice to bring yourself back into the present moment, into your breath, into the sensations in your body. So maybe just like a gentle invitation, you can invite yourself back into this practice. Maybe you start to turn your gaze in the opposite direction as your knees. You can take this movement at your own pace, stretching, listening to the sensations, noticing, bringing your breath and your awareness. And then we'll come back to center and let's go ahead and reach the fingertips up towards the sky. We'll drop the right arm onto the left shoulder and then the left hand underneath the right armpit. And you can start to give yourself a nice big hug, maybe rocking a little bit side to side. We 
breathing into the fullness of your back, finding a gentle massage along the strong, steady earth. Notice if you can cultivate gratitude for your from your heart center. What is something you might feel grateful for today? And then we'll come back to stillness. Open your arms out wide to the side. Stretch them into a letter T shape. And then we'll float the fingertips back up towards the sky. Cross the left arm over. Drop it onto the right shoulder. Bring the right hand underneath the left armpit. And just once more, send this nice big hug, maybe as a blessing of support to someone special in your life that you feel grateful for. Gently tick-tocking the elbows a little side to side. Once more, massaging along the spine. Feeling the expansion at the back of your heart. And then whenever you feel ready, we'll come back to stillness. Open the arms out into a letter T. And then go ahead and find yourself on your seat. So you can either um, rock and roll up into a seat or roll onto one side. And then to come into a comfortable seat, you might fold the blanket so that you can make a little pillow to sit on. So, oops, <laughs> I folded my blanket up quite a bit here. And we're just going to find a comfortable seat. You can always do this from a chair as well. So if sitting cross-legged doesn't feel comfortable, or if you want, you can spread your legs out wide if that feels better. So just find yourself coming into a comfortable seat. Take a moment to arrive. We call this like a seated mountain pose. Feeling your strong, steady support of balance. And then on the next exhale, allow your head to gently bow towards your heart. And then on your next inhale breath, allow your right ear to float over any amount towards your right shoulder, allowing your left shoulder to fall away from your ear. Exhale, bowing your head once more towards your heart, and then inhaling your left ear over towards your left shoulder. And go ahead and softly, gently allow the head to fall from left to right through center. The next time your right ear falls over to your left shoulder, you might stay here, just allowing your breath to cascade down the left side of the neck. You can either stay in stillness or maybe you find some gentle movement possibly nodding the head yes. Think about something you'd love to invite into your life. What would you like to practice saying yes to? And then pause for a moment and you can start to gently shake your head no. Maybe this time you practice saying no to something with grace, with softness. And then we'll pause for a moment. On your next exhale, you can bow towards your heart. And we're gonna bring the left ear over towards the left shoulder. And just take a moment to pause here. Or find those soft, gentle movements. Gently nodding the head yes. Noticing where you can soften. Can you allow your right shoulder to melt away from your ear? And then pausing for a moment, gently shaking the head no.
lifting and lowering the chin towards the shoulder. It might be normal to find a little bit of snap, crackle, pop there, knowing that we're lubricating the joints without cranking or hurting. Don't go too far and say no with softness, with grace. And then find stillness once more and we'll bow the head towards the heart Inhale to lift the gaze and we're going to bring it down into the shoulders, rolling the shoulders up towards the ears, bringing them back and down behind you. Just see if there's any tension that might be living in the shoulders and you can either keep them in sync or you might try to toggle one shoulder at a time. Let's find one more nice deep breath like this. And then this time we're going to reverse the direction of the shoulder rolls. So squeeze the shoulder blades together at your back. Draw the shoulders up towards the ears and round them down in front. A few more shoulder rolls, shrugging it out. Notice any tension living there. And can you usher it out with your breath? Feel free to even take a sigh out through the mouth. <sighs> Letting go, releasing that tension, non-possessiveness. And then we'll come back to stillness. When you're ready, we can inhale, draw the palms to meet up and overhead. And then we'll drop the right hand either down to the ground or if you have a block, or something you'd like to lean on, or maybe if you're sitting in a chair, you could grab hold of the seat of the chair or plant your palm on the seat of the chair. I can, I feel like it's more comfortable for me to bring my hand all the way to the ground. And then we'll circle the left hand up towards the sky and you might lift your gaze up. You could again, stay in stillness or maybe you draw a beautiful circle with your fingertips. Almost like you're painting the gorgeous rainbow gliding from the fingertips using your creative imagination. Find mobility in the shoulder, a nice side bend here. And you might follow the fingertips with your gaze, again, stretching through the neck. The next time your fingertips lift up towards the sky, we'll pause there and then inhale to come back to center, bringing both hands up and overhead. Exhale, draw the hands to the heart center. Take a moment to pause, noticing the differences from left to right, maybe a little bit of asymmetry in the body. And then when you're ready, you can inhale, circle, sweep the arms back up and overhead. This time we'll land the left hand, reach the right hand up and over, and you can always stay here in a side bend, or maybe you find a little bit of mobility, softly, gently, even maybe slowly drawing those nice big circles with the right fingertips. And you might even circle your gaze along with it. Using your creative imagination to draw circles, painting circles in the air. What do they look like? 
And the next time your hand reaches up towards the sky, we'll pause there. And then you can inhale, float both arms up. Exhale, draw the hands into the heart. Now we're going to get ready for cat and cow. So you can either stay seated. Maybe you even uh, stretch your legs out. If this is feeling like, yeah, I need to stretch my legs. And you could even reverse the cross of your ankles. And that's probably going to feel awkward because you have a habitual pattern. I don't know, at least for me, it feels awkward when I, when I reverse the patterning. And you can do your cat and cow here, stretching through your spine, either seated, inhaling to lift the heart forward, exhaling to round the spine back, or you could do it on hands and knees. And if you don't want to be on the wrists and the knees, you could also do this from standing. So maybe I'll show a standing version with the chair. So find your version of cat and cow. From a stilted tabletop, you could inhale, lower the belly, exhale, round the spine. This could take the weight off of the wrists and the knees. After a few rounds, maybe you want to circle the belly button, imagining you're tracing the inside of a hula hoop, pausing anywhere that feels interesting, and sending those places extra breath. If you're circling in one direction, go ahead and reverse the direction of your circles and take a moment to be with the structure of your skeleton. Allowing yourself to practice awe and wonder over this immaculate design, so intricate. This Allowing yourself to cultivate that beginner's mindset. And then from wherever you are, we're going to be meeting up in a forward fold. So if you want to come through a downward dog, you're always welcome to pause in a child's pose. You could bring your hands to rest on the ground on the seat of a chair or I'm gathering up my blocks. I like to rest my hands on the blocks. And you could even wrap your hands around your opposite elbows and just allow yourself a moment to ragdoll here, swaying from side to side. Maybe thinking of the sway of an elephant's trunk. Allowing the whole back side of the body to stretch. And then we'll come back to neutral. You can plant your palms either on your shins, your thighs, your blocks, or chair. And we'll inhale to lengthen the spine, lifting up halfway, exhaling to forward fold. Go ahead and do that two more times. Inhaling to lift up halfway. Exhaling to forward fold. Inhaling, draw the belly button in towards the spine as you lengthen the spine, lifting the crown towards the wall in front of you. Exhaling to release. And then we'll spring load the knees. Sweep the arms out to the sides and rise up tall to stand in mountain pose. You can draw your hands to meet at your heart center and then just take a moment to relax your hands on your heart. And see if you can feel for the rhythm of your own heartbeat. 
bringing your awareness back into your intention for your practice. Noticing that glowing jewel. Thinking about a parigraha non-possessiveness. What is something you want to let go of? And then go ahead and blink your eyes open. And we're going to try a little bit of balance and maybe a standing twist. So I'm going to use the chair for this so that I don't have to uh, try so hard to balance. It's like that effort, uh, the balance of effort and ease, actually. So I'm going to step the, actually, let's start with the left. So you can either step, you're going to root down through your right foot. You could just peel your left heel off of the mat. And this might be enough asymmetry to practice balance. I find that it feels really nice stretching my foot this way. You could step that left foot on the block or on the seat of the chair, or you could hover the foot in space, trying to balance on one foot. What's nice about using the chair is then I can kind of think about balancing on the right foot, keeping a soft um, support underneath the left foot. And then see what is required of you to stand and balance. We talk about in balancing, we talk about a dristy. And this is what we call a soft focal point. So find yourself a dristy. This is going to be a place that you can focus your attention softly. You can keep your hands at your hips or at your sides, or you might float your palms up towards the sky, your fingertips up towards the sky. On the next exhale, we're going to come into a twist. So we're going to bring the arms out in front like zombie arms. And then that left hand that's right above the left knee, you can swing it just like a pendulum open. So you're like hugging a nice big beach ball. You can stay right here or you might bring your right hand to your left knee. And then maybe you peek your gaze behind you. You can keep your hand out and open or bring your hand to your hip. Just practicing balance. Maybe you bring the dristy, that focal point behind your shoulder. We're gonna unwind from the twist, soften both feet onto the mat, and then just take a moment to softly shake that out. Letting your arms graze your sides. <sighs> Maybe exhaling through the mouth. And just let it go. Practicing non-possessiveness, leaving it behind you in the past. Noticing whatever thoughts, feelings come up and allow them to release with your breath. And then we'll get ready for the other side. So I'm going to bring myself back to facing my chair, rooting down through the feet. This time we're going to balance on the left leg. So you can peel the right heel off of the mat. This might be your pose right here. Keeping a little bit of a touch stone. Can you think about recruiting the muscles of your belly to sort of gently draw your belly button towards your spine? You could balance your right foot on a block, on the chair, or in the air. You could keep your hands at your hips, bring them to your heart, or Reach them up towards the sky. You might find a gentle gaze wherever feels good to you. Maybe even looking up towards the heavens. Practicing that idea of awe and wonder. On the next exhale, we'll bring the hands out like zombie arms. And then allow the right hand, which is the same knee that's up, the right hand, just like the dial of a clock, 
and reach around behind you finding a twist. And maybe you bring your hand to your opposite knee. You could bring your hand, your right hand to your hip. You could turn your gaze behind your shoulder. Whatever feels good for you in your twist. Inhale to lengthen the spine, exhale to find a little bit more space in your twist. And whenever you're ready, we'll unwind the twist, come back to standing mountain pose, and then shake it all off. Letting it all go. Take a moment to come back to stillness into your standing mountain, Tadasana. This kitty is trying to eat the plants. It's not good. This is Luna, the Halloween cat. And then we're going to try one more standing balance called bird. Well, some people call this uh, eagle pose. I mean, it is called eagle pose. Or in Sanskrit, they call it garudasana. So for this one, I'm going to bring a block to the right, or sorry, to the left side. So I have a block on the high setting here. And there's going to be lots of options along the way. So go ahead and start out in mountain pose. And then we'll sweep the arms out wide to the side. Open your chest. I'm just going to step back a little bit so you can fully see me. And then on your next exhale, we'll bring the left arm over the top of the right. Give yourself a nice big hug. And this time you can tick-tock the elbows a little side to side, really allowing yourself to feel grateful for this body, this time you've carved out for yourself. Feel the expansion of your heart at your back. And then when you're ready, we'll pause that movement, come back to stillness, Start to find that same kind of balance, rooting down through the left foot. You can peel the right heel off of the mat. And then you could stay right here, or you might press the top of your right foot on top of your left foot. This is going to require a little bit more balance. Or you could even bring the toes to that block, the right toes to the block. This is kind of wrapping inward. Maybe just like a bird on its perch, you can start to bring the elbows towards the knees, drawing the belly button towards the spine, drawing inward. And then when you're ready, we're going to open out, float it out just like we did before, shake it all off. Now, Kitty, you're going to make yourself sick with those, with those plants. She really, really wants to eat that spider plant. I think it's cat safe, actually, so maybe it'll be okay. Take a moment to rest your hands at your heart center and feel that intention, a parigraha. How can you let it go? How can you practice letting go? Letting go of the need to control. What is it that you'd like to help yourself let go of? And then we'll blink the eyes open. I'm going to move the block over to the right side now. Stretching your arms, your big eagle-like arms, out into a T, open through the heart and the chest and this time 
We're gonna wrap the left arm under the right arm and send this hug, this blessing of support out to someone special in your life, someone you feel grateful for. Maybe someone who needs extra support and love today. Maybe even more than one person. And notice what it might look like for love to radiate from your heart center towards this special person that you feel grateful for. And then we're gonna come back to stillness. We're gonna bring the weight into the right leg now. Peel your right heel off of the mat. So you're coming into asymmetry and you could step the foot on top of the other one. So your left foot right on top of the right. It's gonna require a little bit of balance. Again, we might find that dristy. You could also bring the toes on top of whoa, on top of the block and it's okay to fall right that's what we're also learning how to do so finding your balance and allowing yourself to come right back how do we handle falling with grace Take one more nice deep breath and then we'll step it out wide to the side, opening your eagle arms up and shaking it all off. Maybe sighing out through the mouth, <sighs> letting go. Letting go of anything that no longer serves us. When you're ready, we'll come back to the top of our mats and we're gonna get ready to come down to our bellies next. So maybe you take a downward dog, maybe you find yourself in tabletop. You could take a downward dog with the chair, walking the hips back, stretching your arms out in front. And you might walk your dog by sashaying your hips a little bit side to side. And then you can come directly onto your belly or I'm gonna walk you through a plank. So I'm gonna come down onto hands and knees. And I really love a forearm plank. So you can come onto your forearms, walk your knees back and allow your belly to hover over the earth. Maybe on your knees, maybe you tuck your toes under and lift one knee at a time, finding that just little bit of quiver. And whenever you feel ready, the earth is just a short distance away to lower your belly down, rest your forearms, underneath your shoulders, or sorry, your elbows underneath your shoulders, and we'll come into Sphinx pose. So lifting the chest, lifting the heart forward. You could take a few soft, gentle shoulder rolls here, shrugging the shoulders up towards the ears. Exhale, soften them down the back. On the next exhale, let's stack the palms. Lower the forehead all the way down to the back of your hands. Take a moment in your crocodile. This is called crocodile pose, Makrasana. Take a moment to just soften everything. Once more, relaxing your effort into the support of the earth. Maybe you take a few sighs out through the mouth. Just letting everything go. And then what I wanna offer is the idea of a half frog here. 
So you can keep your hand position where it is, or you could come back into your sphinx position with your arms, um, your forearms on the ground, your elbows underneath the shoulders. We're gonna bend the left knee and then just bring the left leg out to the side so that your leg, your left leg is in a frog leg position. And then just try to soften here. So breathing into the inner thigh, noticing what sensations are arising for you. Maybe you can actively flex the toes towards the knee or soften the foot. Just noticing where you can find some comfort in the stretch. And once more, you could lower your forehead Some people will do this frog pose with both legs at the same time. So if that feels like that's accessible for you and you want a deeper stretch, you could bend the right leg into the, into the same position, but I thought we would try one at a time first. Just taking it one step at a time. So we'll take one more nice deep breath on the left side. When you feel ready, you can extend both legs back. Maybe you bend the knees and allow the heels to softly sway from side to side. When you feel ready, we'll soften both feet back down to the earth. We're gonna bend the right knee now, bringing the hip or bringing the knee out to the side into your frog leg position. And again, if you feel like this is not enough sensation for you, you could do both legs together. We're basically looking for a stretch through the inner thigh or wherever else you might feel sensation. Your body is unique to you and you know it best. So important to listen, pay attention. That's what we're training ourselves to do in yoga. Take one more nice deep breath here. And then we'll bring the legs back to center. Maybe you bend the knees, soften the heels from side to side. Notice where you feel sensation here. Perhaps a massage along the belly, the fronts of the thighs. And then when you're ready, you can soften your feet back down. We'll bring the hands underneath the shoulders. Inhale to roll the shoulders up towards the ears, glide them down the back, and lift the heart for a baby cobra, strengthening through the spine. On the next exhale, you can turn your gaze to the left, allowing the right temple to find the mat or maybe a block if the ground feels too far away. Let's inhale, roll the shoulders up, glide them down the back, lift the heart for a baby cobra softly. You can press into the earth with your hands underneath your shoulders, or you can even use the strength of your spine by hovering the hands over the earth. On the next exhale, turn your gaze to the right, allow your left temple to come down and rest on the mat or a block. And it's your choice. You can do this a few more times, alternating your gaze from left to right. Maybe growing your baby cobra up a little taller each time. Allow yourself to follow the pace of your own breath. Strengthening the spine in baby cobra.
maybe one more time on each side. And then when you feel ready, we'll press the palms underneath the shoulders, press up to tabletop. And we're gonna find ourselves in a child's pose. So you might bring the big toes to touch, open the knees out wide, sink, sink the hips back. And then you can either walk your hands out in front or if the earth feels too far away, maybe you bend the left elbow Allow your forehead to touch down on your left forearm, reaching the right hand out in front. And we'll take a few rounds of breath just like this. And then if you're in this position without your hands reaching both forward, we'll switch halfway through so you can give the other side a turn. If you're resting your hand on your left forearm, go ahead and bring your right forearm underneath your forehead. Stretch your left arm forward. Allow your heart to melt towards the earth. Next up, we have another stretch that I'm gonna demonstrate seated in case you don't wanna be on hands and knees anymore in child's pose, and then I'll show you from hands and knees. It's going to be um, thread the needle. So essentially, you're getting a stretch all along the shoulder and the arm, and it kind of looks like this. You're gonna bring your right arm in front, and you can hug the right arm in with your left hand, hooking it around onto your forearm. So you can either do this side to side from a seat if you wanna um, not be on the knees anymore. Remembering that you can always put a blanket underneath the knees for a little bit more softness. So if you're finding that it's hard to be on the knees and you still wanna try this, maybe you bring a blanket underneath the knees and then from here, that same side, I'm going to plant my right hand down. I'm going to show you also with a block. So I'll bring the block out in front, step my left hand right next to the block, and then weave the right hand underneath. So you're actually coming into a bit of a twist, allowing the temple to either come down to the block or to the ground, or if the block is too hard, you can also use a pillow for underneath your head. And you can either keep supporting your weight with your left hand, or you might walk the left hand out in front, just like that child's pose, extending the arms, extending this one arm past your ear. A third option for the left hand, if it feels good, would be to wrap the left hand up and around and allow the back of the hand to rest on the low back. So find your favorite option, knowing that that is right for you and letting go of everything else giving yourself permission to explore. You might imagine your breath circling around your spine. Circling around your shoulder blade and your shoulder joint. And 
What tension might be trapped or holding there that you can release with the breath? And then when you're ready, we'll come back to hands and knees. Get ready for the other side. So I like to do this from a child's pose. Planting the right palm underneath the shoulder. You can weave the left arm underneath. Maybe catching your left temple with a block or a pillow. Or maybe you can reach it all the way down to the ground. And you can keep supporting your weight here with your right hand or if it feels good walk that hand out in front like child's pose or sweep it around to rest it on your low back you can also do this one just like you did the right side from seated Knowing that you have that freedom to choose. Imagine your breath wrapping around the vertebrae of your spine, sweeping behind the shoulder blade and hugging the shoulder joint. Let's take one more nice deep breath here. Whenever you feel ready, we'll press back up into our tabletop or into your seat, and then we're going to come onto our seats, sweeping the feet around in front. And from here, you can hold behind the thighs and start to lean your torso back for boat pose, lifting your heart up. You can feel maybe that strength required in your core, your will. You might float one chin to parallel at a time, or maybe both. You could also release your hands from behind your legs and reach your hands out in front. So maybe a little bit more challenging. Anytime you're ready, feel free to roll onto your back, hug your knees in towards your chest, either behind your thighs, or you could walk your hands up to your ankles, or maybe you can reach and grab hold of your feet, perhaps the knife edge of your feet, or wrap your peace fingers around your big toes. Whatever would feel good to you. Coming into happy baby. You might rock a little bit side to side. Just feel that massage of the earth along your back. Noticing where you can let go of tension. When you're ready, we're going to release the feet, plant the feet on the mat, and then press into your feet. I'm actually gonna remove the blanket because it's a little odd underneath me. So press into your feet, lift your hips up, and then slide them a little bit to the right so that you can land the knees and stack them over to the left. We'll come into a nice generous twist. Maybe you turn your gaze over towards your right hand. Just find any way to soften here. Allowing both of your shoulders to rest heavy on the earth. You're welcome to stay right here in your twist. 
Or if it would feel good to find a little bit of movement for the upper back and the arm, we can rainbow those right fingertips up and over the body and then reach your left, or sorry, your right fingertips past your left hand as you roll onto your left side. And then you can glide the right arm across the chest, sweeping it back open into your twist. Feel free to find that movement a few more times if that would feel good to you. Allowing yourself to find the pace of your own breath. Exhaling as you close it up, inhaling to expand and open. Find stillness when you feel ready. And then we'll find this twist. We're gonna get ready for the twist on the other side. So rolling back onto your back, you can hug your knees in towards your chest. Maybe you find a little bit of massage for your low back by cupping your hands over your knees and just drawing a little circle with the knees. In one direction, and then circling the knees in the other direction. When you feel ready, we'll soften the feet down to the earth, press into the feet, slide to lift the hips, you know, slide the hips over to the left in order for the knees to stack over to the right. And then find this twist by turning your gaze over towards your left hand just relaxing into the support of the earth. Notice where you can practice a parigraha non-possessiveness and let go of any tension or holding. Maybe that might be stored in the jaw, the neck, the shoulders. Take a moment to lovingly scan the body, looking for those areas you can clean house lighten your journey letting go of those possessions those tensions even those stories that you might not need feel the weight of gravity almost like a hug from the universe holding you allowing you to let go and if you want to do that same movement we did on this side, you could start to rainbow the right finger, or these were the left fingertips, the left fingertips up and over the body. Reach your right hand past your left hand and then allow your left fingertips to glide along your chest, giving you a loving caress. Feel free to find a few more rounds like that. Rolling onto your right side. Gently caressing the front of your chest, opening it back up into your twist. Looks like cleaning house, sweeping away any tension with your breath with this movement and then when you feel ready finding stillness once more relaxing into your twist almost imagine for a moment you're either lying on a sandy beach or a grassy field and see that unique imprint that your body is making imprint that only you can make.
Make one more soft, soothing breath in your twist. And then we'll roll onto the back, hug the knees in towards the chest. This time you might lift your head, bringing your nose a little bit towards your knees. Squeeze yourself into a little ball and then soften that effort, relaxing back. And we're gonna set up for our final resting pose, Shavasana. And I always like to give you the option at the end of class, if there are any last shapes or poses that you feel like would serve you, I want you to feel at liberty to choose those. Maybe it's bringing the soles of the feet to touch, opening the knees out wide for a reclined butterfly. And if this feels too intense on the inner thighs, you could always wedge a, um, some blocks underneath the thighs. Maybe you bring the hands to rest on your belly. And you could take a few deep breaths like this or come back to your original pose, which was the constructive rest, your feet on the ground, allowing your knees to tent together. This can sometimes feel a little bit more cozy on the low back. But feel free to come into a traditional Shavasana, laying flat on the back, maybe cozying up with blankets, you could always slide a pillow underneath the knees. Anything that would help you surrender. Once you find that cozy position, see if you can soften your forehead. You can smooth out the eyelids. Relax the cheeks and the hinge of the jaw. Allow the shoulders to melt into the earth. And then send that relaxation all the way down the body. As you rest here, I'm going to offer you a short reading on non-possessiveness. Just feel free to allow the words to fall where they may, like gentle drips of rain. No need to think too hard about them. Just allow them to fall. Letting your mind rest. And then we'll pause for some quiet relaxation. Non-attachment does not mean we don't care or that we somehow shut ourselves off from the pleasures and joy of life and each other. In fact, non-attachment frees us up to be immersed in appreciation of life and one another. 
We are asked to let go of the clinging to the thing, not the enjoyment of the thing itself. Letting go of the ownership opens us up to full engagement with what is set before us in the present moment. Life becomes a banquet. We are free to feast. Like the breath, we are invited to breathe in deeply, enjoying the fullness of the inhalation, and then let go just as deeply and fully, enjoying the release of the exhale. The fewer attachments we carry with us, the more we are free to enjoy and engage and live every moment before us to the fullest. The more breath we let go of, the more room there is in our body for the fullness of the next inhalation the more we generously share and give away, the more expansive and light we become. The journey of life is towards freedom. A bird cannot hold its perch and fly. Neither can we grasp anything and be free. Practicing constant generosity and unfailing trust will keep our greed in check and keep us open to life's unfolding. What wants to come to us is so great. And what we hold on to is often so small. Just like a trapeze artist, are we willing to be suspended in midair in total trust of the timing and of a future that is greater than the one we are holding on to? Give yourself this moment to practice a parigraha non possessiveness by letting go. Letting your breath breathe you. Sinking into the support of the earth.
You can begin to start to deepen your breath, noticing if you can practice letting go in order to receive the fullness of your next inhale. Bring your awareness into your heart center, noticing that intention you set at the beginning of class, and just observing if it's changed. And then follow the beams of light from that glowing jewel out into the stars, into the universe. Take a moment to practice awe and wonder, feeling yourself light, awe and wonder and gratitude at what an amazing opportunity it is to be here today alive in this unique time and place. Bring to mind three things you can find awe and wonder and gratitude for. And then just softly like a feather, allow your awareness to float back down into your heart center. Begin to inhabit your own body. And start to expand your breath, deepening it, imagining it can reach all the way to your fingers and toes and start to wiggle your fingers and toes, rotating gently your wrists and your ankles. And then see about finding a nice long body stretch, reaching your arms past your ears. You can roll gently onto one side, cradling your head, Coming into a fetal position. Take a moment to rest there for two nice deep breaths. And then as slowly and softly as possible, use the strength of your arms to press yourself up into a seat. On your next inhale, you can float your arms creating a big circle around you. Reach your hands up towards the sky and then draw your hands together into your heart center in a gesture of gratitude, Anjali Mudra. Go ahead and allow your head to bow towards the wisdom of your loving heart. It's such an honor and a privilege to guide you through your practice this morning. We say, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti, which means peace, peace, peace. Enough for ourselves, each other, and the rest of the world. So thank you for sharing your practice with me today. Please feel free to hang out afterwards if you have any thoughts or questions about class.